In this video, we're going to take a look at creating numerous copies of a vector in an array pattern or a circular rotation pattern. So I'd like to create lots of copies of this love heart down on the bottom left. Now we can do that by using a tool up here called block and rotate copy. So if I select that, open up the dialog box and the first option that you can see is block copy. So this is just going to do a block, which is an array of copies. So if I select block copy and I'll use the first option, which is distances are offsets. So let's change the offset of this to be one inch. Okay. And I'm not going to mess about with the directions or the copies at the moment. I'm just going to select apply. Okay, so what's happened here is that it's copied from there to the center of that one, which is one inch. And it's created three copies in X and three copies in Y, because that's what I've specified here. So columns are in X. So if I were to change that to five and undo that and apply, so it's created five copies now in X, rows are in Y. So let's put that back to three copies. I'll undo that and let's change the offset. So let's say if I made it two inches and apply. So the distance between each center of these is two inches, okay? If I undo that and change the direction so I can click on these icons, so if I change that to be the other direction in X, you can see it goes backwards. That's not the way that I want it to go for this particular piece. And I can also do the same in Y. So if I apply that, you can see it's going in the opposite direction to what I actually want. So let's switch those around. Now you also have distances are gaps, which is my preferred method to be honest with you, because this denotes the gap in between each vector rather than the center of the vectors. So if you do gaps, and if I leave it at two inches now, you'll see that this is quite large. So this is a two inch gap between the vectors. So if I undo that, and let's make it, let's say, a quarter of an inch. And then apply. Now, this has created nine vectors and it's got a quarter of an inch gap in between them. Now, if you wanted to fill up this piece really, really quick without having to undo this and then type in different size columns, what I tend to do is to create something like that and then apply it again, and it will create three columns of this group of objects. So if I apply that, it creates a really big piece. And then what you can do is just select all of those and delete them, like so. And that's how you can quickly fill up the page or the model space. So that's how the block copy works. The rotate copy, is a little bit different. So if I just delete all of these, so I've just got this heart and let's go to rotate copy. Now, when you do rotate copy, it needs to have a rotation center. So what you can do, you can enter zero, zero if you want to. I believe my zero, zero is in the center of the model. If you're not sure, then what you can do is hover the mouse cursor over the view. And if you take a look down the bottom right hand side, you will get sizes in X, Y, and Z. And this tells you exactly where that cursor is in the model space. So here you can see it's pretty much zero, zero. So I know that zero, zero is in the center of this model. Another tip is because I have this love heart selected, if you take a look next to the X, Y, and Z coordinates, there's also something called W and H. This stands for width and height. 
So this is telling me the width and the height of that vector that I've got selected. So if you need to find out the sizes of something quickly, then just select the vector and take a look at the width and height of it. So if you're having to measure it. Okay, another way that you can specify the rotation center is to click select. And then once you've clicked that, you can literally just click anywhere on the screen and that will become your center. So if I snap to there, you can see that that is zero, zero. Let's say that I didn't want it there and I want it to be here. You could just click there and that would become your zero. So I'm just going to put this in the center. Let's snap it. So I'm at zero, zero. Now you can do incremental, so it just does steps, or you can do a total, which is what I normally tend to do, of 360 degrees. Create how many copies you want, let's say six. Now I know that this isn't going to work particularly well because of the offset that I've got here. So let's apply that. You can see that it's created these copies. Now the six copies that I've got include the one that I've got. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so when you do that copy, make sure that you include the one that you already have. It's going to create five additional copies of it. Now, what I need to do really with this one is to maybe move it somewhere near the center, let's say there, and then let's go into transform. So just T on the keyboard, rotate that around. So I'm pressing Alt on the keyboard and I'm just doing that at 90 degrees. So now if I apply that, you can see that it creates all these copies around. Okay, so that's how you use a block copy and a rotate copy within the software.